Angels are the most powerful beings that exist. They are so powerful that they are not even allowed to fight in law. The penalty for if they do fight is they die. This seems to be a purposely put in place limiter on these all powerful beings. If this wasn't there, there would be really no reason why angels just don't run havoc and control everything, which they already kind of do, but with abilities that are fourth and fifth dimensional, such as birthing people's babies, manipulating time and space, and pretty much being able to do whatever they want, how did they come into existence, and will they ever be surpassed, as the point of Dragon Ball is to always grow and get stronger, and eventually surpass everyone. It isn't just one person, it's a potentially endless cast of beings that are living in a completely different reality to the rest of us. There's been some new information about this over the years, and I figured I'd just put it all here together in one video. This video is once again brought to you by Brilliant. Brilliant.org is a fantastic platform where you can learn math and computer science in an interactive and engaging way. Brilliant offers a wide array of lessons covering everything from fundamental math to advanced topics like AI, probability, neural networks, and more. They continually update their collection, adding in new lessons each month. This month I tried out their Applied Probability course, where I immersed myself in concepts such as thinking probabilistically, utilizing outcomes and applications. This time the course consisted of five main lessons, providing an excellent introduction that catered to beginners and made the learning experience enjoyable. Whether you're an aspiring professional or already established in the realm of math, science, or AI, Brilliant proves to be an indispensable tool. With its hands-on approach encompassing basic to advanced lessons, it equips you with new and challenging skills. Designed with busy individuals in mind, Brilliant efficiently delivers the information that you need in a low-pressure environment, ensuring a productive and effective learning experience. So, to try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, Visit Brilliant.org with my username or click the first link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription once again. The point of Dragon Ball is to always be growing and becoming stronger. Since day one that has been the goal of Goku and to this day that is still the goal. You see in the beginning of Super, he feels like he's stagnating and he feels depressed. However, the angels are not a group of beings that are designed to be surpassed. Take for example Whis, even if Goku got to a level where he could defeat someone like Whis, notice how not once have we ever seen him fight. This is by design and not just a lack of ambition by Toriyama. In the moral arc of Dragon Ball Super, an angel in training named Mirus gets introduced as part of Universe 7's Galactic Patrol. And this is also unique because it implies that there can be apprentice angels ready for standby. But it was told during the events of the final battle with Moro that angels are only meant to observe over this reality and not begin choosing sides with lower life forms. As Mirus was only an angel in training, he broke this rule and chose the side of Goku where he would attack Moro and then slowly begin to fade away out of existence. Knowing this would be the eventual outcome, he sacrificed his life as an angel for Goku, as he was then resurrected by the Grand Priest, father of all angels, but he is now no longer an angel, just a regular person. To this day, that remains the reason why Whis, or any angel, has never fought anyone. In the Broly movie, you saw him against Broly, but notice how he never actually attacked him, only dodged his punches. If Whis did fight back here, he would no longer exist, or at the very least, he'd lose his angel status and be reformed into a regular person, just like how Mirus was, and maybe end up looking something like this. From this point, it has been shown that angels are made and destroyed by the father angel Daishinkan. He is on a separate level to the others, so for some context, Whis's jurisdiction is to only take care and assist the god of destruction, Beerus. That's it. He cannot move without Beerus and is bound to him until he resigns or dies as God of Destruction. The Grand Priest jurisdiction has a far greater reach, overseeing the two Xenos, access to all 12 universes, and is even responsible for training and recruiting new angels. He is a lot more powerful than anyone currently, but since he is the Father Angel, leader of the most powerful beings ever, what would happen if he was forced to fight? He is described as being in the top 5 strongest fighters in the multiverse, which does imply he fought before and is allowed to, so the rules do not directly apply to him. He makes the rules. Originally, Whis began training Vegeta under the agreement that when Beerus dies, Vegeta could take over. Knowing that a Saiyan's lifespan isn't in the millions of years, 
we could be expecting Beerus to die relatively soon, in the next 30 or so years if he's asking someone like Vegeta. And so for the last few years, that has been the purpose of specifically Vegeta's training, to become more like Beerus. As for Goku, he already rejected the role of God of Destruction, as it isn't in his nature. So the idea was, Whis was training Goku under Ultra Instinct to become more like himself, an angel, and eventually ascend into the true role one day, sort of like doing a reverse mirrors, as he and Vegeta would have then this weird god-angel dynamic going on. However, with the revelation that angels simply are not allowed to fight, there's no way Goku would ever willingly do this. It does sort of fit though, and there's definitely a connection to God of Destruction Vegeta and Angel Goku. Uh, an angel's true purpose is to keep balance. That is their one agreement they must uphold for being so powerful. If they do anything outside of this, they risk the chance of not just dying, but not existing. However, this does not seem to be limited to training designated mortals such as Goku and Vegeta. This means they can indirectly choose a side and assist in a more discreet way. In the past, there were six more working angels in the 18 corresponding universes. After six of them were destroyed, the angels of those universes have never been seen again, and they could have just been put away in the Grand Priest's large, unseen storage room for later, or just turned back into a normal person. Angels will not die from a universe being erased, as can be seen in the Tournament of Power, where every universe was systematically destroyed, everyone vanished except for the angels. There is an initiation test that all angels must go through. As can be seen with Mirus, who failed his initiation test, they are sent down into their respective universe to see if they do really have angelic qualities. As for Mirus, he had all the traits of one, the ultra instinct, the power, but he didn't have the balance. He chose a side, and that is ultimately what made him not worthy of being an angel. You could imagine Whis's initiation millions of years ago, he probably did everything perfectly, never chose a side, and was the perfect angel, and that's why he's upheld that position for millions of years. An angel can be ultimately made or destroyed by the Grand Priest and the laws applied by him. He is the father of all angels and ultimately decides who gets promoted and who gets demoted. Whenever there is a problem in the hierarchy of the multiverse, all angels must report to the Grand Priest and await his orders. He created this entire race of beings by himself. Stated as the most powerful fighter across all universes, these are the two most powerful characters in the story still right now.